Hello, um, my name is Frank McElhenney and I have an exhibition which is called Flight and the word flight suggests migration, that's the general theme of the exhibition, is about the movement of people. In particular the exhibition looks at the movement of people from Ireland into the west of Scotland, uh, prompted in large part by uh, the events in the middle of the 19th century when there was a, a great famine that affected uh, Ireland as a whole but, and the Highlands and Islands of Scotland but was particularly bad in the west of Ireland. Um, my own family uh, came over in the 1870s to Glasgow uh, partly as a result of the, the after effects of that, that famine and the work has been made largely in Ireland. I had a, a month long stay in Ireland uh, in Donegal in a residency towards the end of 2019 and then after the, the lockdown had dissipated I made two further trips last year down the whole west coast of Ireland from the very north, Giants Causeway, Malin Head, down to Mizzen Head in the far south and, and Skibbereen and so a lot of the photographs that I've made have been collected along those journeys and pulled together uh, in this exhibition called Flight. In the exhibition, I've tried to use different photographic processes to just tell the story in a kind of multi-layered way. It begins with a photogram simply done of some potato plant leaves. People will know that the famine in Ireland was triggered by a disease of the potato plant on which many poor Irish people relied heavily for their diet. I've created two scrolls with scorch marks on. These represent the number of people that were buried in Glasgow in the years 1845 and 1847. Uh, one scroll has over 8,000 marks, the other has more than 18,000 marks, which tells you that the number of people buried in the space of only two years in Glasgow more than doubled. And that was because when the Irish were Arriving in Glasgow, they were often uh, in a very poor physical condition, either through malnourishment or the diseases that were related to malnourishment. There's a photograph of a cracked wall. That is actually a photograph of the farmhouse where my family lived before they left after the famine. While I was in Donegal, I managed to track down the plot of land that they farmed. There's a nice big house there on the farm now, but right next to it is the old ruin where my family would have lived. Nobody ever photographed the actual famine victims. Although photography was around and certain conflict situations were being photographed at that time. However, there were illustrated newspapers in Britain at the time and there was an illustrator called James Mahoney that was sent over. I've managed to get some archival images of some of the drawings that he made to give a bit of context directly from that time. On one wall in the exhibition, you'll see 100 photographs from the west of Ireland. I think everyone who is a migrant or a descendant of migrants carries a mental picture of the old country, as it were, the, the place of origin their family has come from. So in that series, I've photographed places that I'd heard about or been told about, places that I stumbled upon that helped me complete the picture that uh, I had fragments of in my head. There's a place called Dunbreast Sea Stack, just off the coast of Mayo, where my maternal grandfather, Patrick Durkin, came from and I can imagine Patrick standing there in the same spot as I was looking at that same view. This is a horse that I photographed at Mizzen Head one morning when there was nobody around and out of the mist came this horse stared me right in the eye. It was just like meeting a person really. I photographed a cemetery, Abbey Strowry Cemetery, which is just outside Skibbereen. In the picture there's a large expanse of earth before you would see any headstones. That's because this is a place where during the famine several thousand people were, were buried in pits, coffinless, unmarked, but that area of land is preserved today 
as a memorial to the tragic events of that time. Malin Head, up in the very far north of Ireland, Donegal, is I suppose the flip side of the, the picture from Dumbreast. Here is a spot where I can imagine my great grandparents, uh, the McElhenney's, standing, having one last look at a most dramatic landscape in their home county before they made their way over to Glasgow. People come and go, but, but these views are, are pretty timeless. In my history, it was more thinking about the migration that's happening in the world today, the number of people that are forced to move from their home countries is greater now than ever before, and that's only going to increase as a result of climate change. There are some pictures of a, a deserted village that I photographed in Ireland on Ackle Island. Uh, these are aerial pictures of a village that was deserted just after the famine. But on the same wall, I've got this fleet of ships. They don't have any sails, they just have masts and rigging. But I hope that they find their way to where they're headed and safely reach their destination. So when I was in Donegal, there was a place called Inch Levels where thousands of hooper swans come every year from Iceland to overwinter. So I stood there in the near darkness and just photographed again and again and again these swans coming and going. And it made me think a lot about the movement of people. A million of the, the Irish were allowed to die of starvation and disease as a result of the famine and more than a million fled to other countries uh, abroad. Myself and some of my family members uh, spent about four days just writing the names of passengers who had migrated from Ireland out to the likes of North America, Canada, Australia, out of ports like Liverpool. The seeds of the birch are tiny, but they have wings and they fly in the wind and they'll set down roots on almost any soil. So it's kind of a hopeful series of images that speak about the capacity of people in no matter what circumstances they find themselves to make new homes and, and re-establish themselves and make a life for themselves elsewhere. It just is a, an indication of, again, the capacity of people who do come from other places to establish a life for themselves and that make a contribution to the new society they become part of. The last image in the exhibition is one of my own sons, Connor and Ewan, both now history students at universities in Glasgow. So some kind of small hope for the future.